When you walk the talk and talk the walk, there's a miracle in your mouth. There's a miracle in your mouth. There's a miracle in your mouth. When you walk the talk and talk the walk, there's a miracle in your mouth. The woman with the issue of blood said to herself, If I can touch his garment, I know I'll be well. The centurion said to Jesus, Just speak the word, for I know your authority, and there's a miracle in your word. There's a miracle in your mouth. There's a miracle in your mouth. When you walk the talk and talk the walk, there's a miracle. Amen. Amen. Miracle in your mouth. I love that song. I'm actually going to share some uh, some word with you guys today about uh, Miracle in Your Mouth, a, a blog I wrote yesterday uh, that the Lord kind of led me to. Um, again, I have Adonijah Richmond with me here today. Praise and worshiper for the Lord. I'm going to run down a few things for you guys. Um, first, I want to thank you for joining with me here on Faith and Hope with Charity. Um, I want to let you guys know the No Walls Jam for Jesus concert, December 14th. It's all set. We have artists set. We have a, a saxophonist coming out of Detroit. Um, Adonijah will be singing for us. With You're going to have some backups this time, right? Yes, so, yes. You uh, don't want to miss it. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, we have this, a stage set there now. There's new management that took over um, the A to Z event center. So, so I'm just believing it's going to be great. Um, we have mimers coming. We're going to have Joe Brown on there. He's a rapper, singer for the Lord. We're also going to have Streets Crybaby's going to be there again, um, and then Marquise Johnson will be there. Um, my host this time is going to be Pastor Courtney Williams, great, great man, full of energy, funny. Um, you guys don't want to miss coming out and hanging with him. I'm sure he's got a lot lined up for you guys, too. I also want to bring up that Pamela Lockhart um, from the Hour of Compassion uh, Jesus Ministries is going to have her benefit for the homeless December 27th. I don't think she's still, I think she's kind of one of those. She just waits till the last minute there to get things set up. But I do know that's the date. So you guys set the date aside for that. Uh, the No Walls concert, there is no charge for admission. There is no charge for admission, so please do come. We do ask, though, that if you do want to donate to help um, help us with supplies and things that we do need to throw these concerts and to help the artists out, you can go to jamforjesus.org. It is jamforjesus.org. I also um, ask you to follow along on my blog. It's keepingfaithinyourears.com. Again, keepingfaithinyourears.com. You can go there, get renewed, refreshed, just find some word. And, and I share what the Lord has put in my heart for that week or that day sometimes it's twice a week it just depends also flint talk radio you guys um you can call in here live during the show it's 810-208-1854 you can share your story or if you have a story you want to share and you want to come on the show and share it with people please do so um you can reach me at 810-449-2247 again that's 810-449-2247 um, Adonijah, I believe, is going to open us up here maybe with a little bit of prayer, and then uh, yeah. then we'll share some word with you guys. And uh, You want to go ahead? Yes. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Oh, gracious Father. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. In the you. name of Jesus, God, we yes. worship you. God, we praise you on today. Mm. God, we thank you for everything you have done for us, oh God. God, we thank you for everything that you're going to do. God, we just want to come to you praising you, oh God, worshiping you, oh Lord. For you are a mighty king. You are a mighty strong tower. Jesus, we believe in you. God, we believe that you sent your son down to die for us, oh God. For our sins, oh God. To reclaim us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you touch this world, Lord. Touch the city of Flint, oh God. Oh God, bring those back, oh God, that once followed you, oh God. That got discouraged, oh God. That got weary in their well-doing, oh Lord. Bring them back, oh God. Oh God, the atheists, oh God. The agnostics, oh God. The people who fell away from grace, oh God. Bring them back in the mighty name of Jesus. We count it as done. We believe in it as done, oh God. Oh God, let your power, oh God, get up under them, oh God. And convict them, oh God. And bring them back to grace and truth. In the mighty name name of Jesus we pray and we know that it's done we believe in it oh God and we receive it in Jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. do you uh now y'all know that Adonijah sings so do you have a song you want to just maybe belt out or, or yeah I got a little I got it yes 
<laughs> I always put you on the spot, don't I? <laughs> I know we don't have the keyboard today, but but in listening to the last shows, it seems like the keyboard's just drowning things out. So we're just going to have Adonijah just sing something for you guys and uh, let you enjoy it. Yes. Now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Born into sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Because of your grace, I can finish this race, the precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know, the precious Lamb of God. Why you let me so, Lord, I shall never know the precious Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to read this blog and that in a little bit. But, you know, in coming in today, you know, Adonijah was telling me about running into somebody and and I just kind of feel in my spirit to have him share that with you guys and in, in, in the scripture that the Lord put in his heart to, to share. So do you want to just kind of share with everybody what happened today? In, in... Yes, I uh, today, just on my way here, mm-hmm. I ran into a guy who told me he was an atheist. And he said he's an avenger of those that do wrong. He said he do God's work. So I, I kind of didn't understand where he was coming from. He said he do God's work, but he's an atheist. And, and so I asked him, uh, what is the work that you do? And he say, I, I get people back for doing wrong. So, uh, so I just asked him, can I just say a little word of prayer? And, you know, I didn't get all real Amen. loud and everything. It was maybe just for 10 seconds. And he said, uh, and so he said, uh, he, he was saying to me that he believed he had met angels, but he said the things he had seen in church, and the things he has seen in religion is what led him to not want to have anything to do with church. I said, so you still believe that there's a God, but you just don't want to have nothing to do to do with church? He said, yeah, kind of, sort of. He said, but I see so many different things, people getting killed. And, and he said, then when you go to the church, the church do things or they hurt you or either... Or either they lead you down a path that's just not good for you. They give you the wrong advice and different things like that. So, you know, I couldn't do nothing more. Sometimes it's just good just to just say a word of prayer and just let the Holy Spirit minister through you. So that's what I did. And and so uh, I gave him one of my business cards and I told him to call me. He said that he sure will be calling me. And he said he thanked me for the prayer. And I said, well, you know, it's just all about Jesus, man. It's not about me. That's right. It's not about no Amen. goodness of my own, but it's all about Jesus. And I understand where he was coming from because time back, I didn't want to have anything to do with church anymore. You know, but my life is not my own. To Jesus, I belong. So I just have to continue to give myself away to Jesus. Things I don't understand about preachers and church, you know, I well, just they're human. Give it to the Lord. You know, we yeah. have to understand that even in the church, you're still dealing with humans, you know, um, yes. and, and that kind of leads into a little bit of this blog, you know, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and just go into reading it and then we'll, we'll share the scripture that he has. Um, if you guys want to follow along um, elsewhere, if you have a phone and you're on the internet or whatever, just go to um, keepingfaithinyourears.com. The one I'm going to read to you guys is pick up your sword. The Lord just kept saying to me yesterday, you know, we all have a tattoo and things come at us and and I've had an attack this week you know and and I just thought you know what Lord I don't understand everything and I don't know why we go through what we go through you know but I'm just going to trust in you and and he just kept putting in my spirit to pick up your sword to pick up your sword well what is our sword our sword is the word. Our sword is the word of God. So I shared this um, on the blog, and, and I don't know if y'all can see this, but there's a little picture on here, you know, and that. So so if you can follow along, if not, I'm just going to read it to you guys. It says, the word says, 
An attacker and self-lifter is like a bundle of worms. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9, do you know that the unrighteous and the wrongdoers will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived or misled. In verse 10, it says, Neither shall cheats nor foul mouth slanderers inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. People, we have to pay attention. If others are using slander and foul mouth, so we are not misled and deceived by these people because, you know, that brings in lots of things like fear and then you feel less than or they're overpowering, you know. So, so we have to be careful of who we're around and, and listening to. You know, we have to pay attention to what's coming out of their mouths. You know, um, so then it goes on. It says, most Christians know basic scripture, which we do. I mean, if you hear someone speaking scripture, you know it's scripture, you know. Um, but, but they truly don't know the word context. So, so when you're hearing scripture from others, you might not realize, and it could actually be the devil trying to mislead and control, twisting the word. Because, yes, the devil also knows scripture, and he knows the context of it. You know, and he will use it, and he will use people that are smooth talkers and seeking self-service to attack you, condemn. They'll twist things around, um, mislead, imprison, and deceive you. They'll even take something you said and twist it into something that it's not, you know. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that we have to be careful of and pay attention for because, as you said, even though you're going to church, it doesn't always mean, you know, that's why you have to know the word yourself. You know, natural means extinct, instinctive. I was having a trouble with that word yesterday, too. So every person desires to worship. They do. Whether you're worshiping something over here or over there, your desire in every single one of us is to worship um, and to serve as it should be because that's what we're all created for. You know, and, and that's just what this blog says. To worship joyfully and fellowship freely with our amazing God and now being able to do so through Christ Jesus. So every single one of us have that desire in us to worship and it's who you're worshiping and whether you're worshiping where you should be or not, you know. Um, so the problem lies with people who want self-gratification or who are looking for self-enlightenment, uh, mere man, material things, worshiping these false idols. They lift self worshiping the created things around us instead of the creator. And that's something he was showing me when I'm writing this blog is, is he gave us the heavens and the earth to show the magnitude of who he is. Mm -hmm. And instead of worshiping him, you're worshiping the things that he created. You're looking to things that, that have no power, that have, they can do nothing. They are a thing. He is your creator. So, so he's just showing me there's a lot of things going on where people are worshiping things he created because of their beauty and their greatness. But he is the creator and that much greater and that much more beautiful. And that's where you need to be seeking and looking. So um, what they want is... And if you're and if you're paying attention to somebody, this is why it's important to know the word also is if they're speaking the word and they're speaking context, if you don't know the word in the context yourself, you don't know if it's actual truth. So that's why you have to have the word, the sword inside of you. You have to renew it in yourself daily so that you know the word, so that you know whether what they're telling you is true or not, right? Yeah, amen, right amen, right? <laughs> um, so, so the blog goes on to say they, um, that people will want you to worship and bow to them. Speaking of their own doings, they're preaching false gods, so then they can be lifted as the one. You know, because, I mean, people like attention and whatnot, you know what I mean? But a lot of people will get overzealous with it, we'll say, and, and they want the full attention and they want everybody to lift them when it should be Jesus that's lifted. And as you lift him, he will raise you. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it over and over, and, it, and, it, and that's how it works. So it says, speaking their own doings, preaching false gods, so they can then be lifted as the one, gaining that self-gratification and, and that high. Because it is. They get this euphoria of this, I am the one. They all think, you know, and a lot of people will look for that, and they will use the word in Scripture to get it. So, so it's so funny that you run into that guy and all of this happens because that's, that's our Lord just showing. Um, so then it says, the Lord tells us plainly in, the, in those scriptures that I mentioned above you guys to not be misled by these people for they will not, he says, will not inherit the kingdom and neither will you if you do the same. So stop, if you're, if you're dealing with things or you're caught in something or you're looking at something at how great it is, know that yes, it is great and magnificent. But it is your creator that you need to look to who created that thing. Um, 
So if you do not renew for yourself and stand trusting Jesus as God says to, the problem lies you start to become weak. You're not renewing your mind. You're not standing on Jesus. You're not standing on the truth and keeping the truth in you so you're not deceived. You become weak, and then you're easily controlled and misled by these people, the lies, or false doctrine. I mean, all of it falls in there. So it's so important that you pick up your own sword and not try to defend on somebody else's sword for you. That's right. And the sword is the word. So then the, the blog says, um, pay close attention to the words in this next scriptures and the context of it. So I'm going to read to you guys in Romans. Um, we're going to Romans 1.18. If you do have your Bibles with us and you want to turn to it, um, I'll give you a second. It's Romans 1.18. It says, for God's holy wrath and indignation, which means pleasure uh, or displeasure, anger, irritation, or annoyance, are revealed from heaven against all ungodly and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repress. Now, repress means to crush, defeat, put down, or stamp out, okay? So I'll read that again. For God's holy wrath and indignation, meaning his annoyance, are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repress, putting down, okay? Who in their wickedness repress, putting down, and hinder the truth and make it inoperative, which means out of service, right? So then in Romans 1.20, it says, For every, forever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, okay? Because we can't see God, but we feel. So his invisible nature, and he's telling you this, that ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature and his attributes. Now, attributes means credited to. So, so. All of these things you see around you, the stars, the moon, the, I mean, flowers, all of it. His invisible nature is credited to him and what you're seeing around you. It all points to him. Um, so let me go back here. And unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness were So we're in 120. His attributes, that is, his eternal power and divinity, means holiness, his divine nature, right? Have been made intelligible. Now, intelligible means comprehensive and understandable so then you're looking at science you these scientists who who are saying these and this is factor this and that and who are studying they're comprehending and, and they're seeing what the lord has already said has been here since the beginning of time you know what i'm saying um so it says um his eternal power and divinity have been made intelligible which means understandable and clearly discernible meaning detectable and observable. You can see the stars. You can see the grass. You can see the animal. I mean, it is observable. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I have put it here for you. You can see my magnitude and my greatness in all that is around you. So even though it is great and it's beautiful and it's amazing and, and how cell growth is, who created that? You have to look to the creator Thank you, Lord, for all of this that you have blessed us with, that we can enjoy these things and enjoy these feelings, okay? So, um, so it is discernible, meaning observable, observable, and through the things that have been made, that's all things on this earth, the stars, all of it, his handiworks. Mm -hmm. This is such an important scripture for atheists and people like that. You know, it's so funny. Um, He's just so amazing. Um, have been made, all things on this earth, his handiworks, so men. Now this is, he's telling us, so you are without excuse, all together without any defense or justification. Because every single piece of it points to him. It points to, as we said before, intelligent design. And they don't teach that in schools and stuff no more as they did years ago. Mm -hmm. Because intelligent design points to one God, everything perfectly, made perfectly together, glorious, showing his magnitude and his holiness and his divine nature, how amazing he is, you know. So I'll finish the blog off. So it says, um, God is God and his whole word is the truth. Yes, there is a New Testament and there is an Old Testament, says the Lord. But these are stories, you guys. This is This here, the Bible, is your sword. So you are to read the word and study because the stories in it are the same things that you go through today. 
And what it is, is his apostles are sharing with you what they went through, how they got through it, what you have to do and what you have to say to get through it. Because it is your word. The word coming out of your mouth, the spoken word of God is the sword. And if you don't know the word and you're not speaking the word, you have no defense. But the victory is already won once you speak it out of your mouth. So you, so the Bible, you have the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you have to look at, yeah, there's stories in there, but it's these people sharing how to do it, how to walk, how to live, how to speak, how to claim things and bring things here with you. So it says, um, all right, so there is no justification for any, any whom seek self-service use lying or twisting, deceiving others, who make up their own rules as to why it's okay to lie and deceive. If you know the word, you know that it's not okay for any reason. Because if you're trusting in the Lord and you're leaning on him, he takes care of it all. All you have to do is speak his word. You don't have to manipulate. If you're manipulating and lying, then obviously you're taking that control onto your self-service and you're making sure that you get what you want. You're making sure that your desires and your plans are going ahead. So then you're falling back into self and lifting self. You know, you know, and it's the same thing. I was talking with someone this week. She's like, well, well, I would do anything for my family and I would... Really? Well, you're still lying. You're manipulating. Mm -hmm. If you're trusting in God and it is his will for it to be whatever it is, then you don't have to lie. You don't have to manipulate. You don't have to do those kinds of things because his perfect will will come to play. You don't have to do none of that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I just was sharing a little bit there too. <laughs> and you know, um, what's, what's, what's so, well, as we figure of speech, we always say what's funny is the Bible doesn't lie. Mm -mm. The Bible said that pearliest times shall come, you know, and these uh, they hear, you know, we always heard, uh, always heard the scripture. My uncle, before he passed, he used to always say, there's going to come a time where men going to be lovers of themselves. Amen. And they manipulate and twist. Lovers of God. I mean, you just see so many different things and, and to, to get people saved now is much more harder because everybody is into lifting self. It's I mean, that self-enlightenment. And, yeah. and I've seen that all over the TVs about mm -hmm. um, uh, they're calling self-enlightenment and finding your souls, mm -hmm. this or that. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> that is not what it is about. You mm -hmm. have a spirit and a soul, and, and your spirit is saved. The soul is connected to the mind and the body, which is enmity against God. So if you are seeking self-enlightenment and seeking self-lifting, and you have to twist and lie to get something or to make something happen, then I'm telling you it's not the will of God. Because you don't have to lie, and you don't have to twist, and you don't have to attack, and you don't have to sneak. And if somebody is doing it, you have to have your eyes open. It's mm -hmm. so important to keep your eyes open and your mind open and to know the word. Because people will use scripture. They'll even go all the way back to Adam and Eve. And they'll use Old Testament scripture and say things that they heard as it and use it for their own good and try to manipulate. The word is the word. It is the truth. And we have to have that sword within us so that we're able to defend and say, you know what? No, the word says this. I know what the word says. I have it in my heart. I don't need, you know what I mean? So I'll, I'll finish this up real quick, you guys. Um, so there's no um, twisting, deceiving others who make up their own rules as to why it's okay to lie and deceive when the Lord says that it is not okay in any way. And you don't have to. When you're walking with him and he's taking care of everything and you're relaxed, you don't have to. Then if you do go past that, you're forcing your will and your want and your demand and it will always blow. It will always blow up. It will. Um, so there is no justification for idolatry and misleading others away from the truth. Now, that is an important statement on that blog because I wanted you guys to understand the whole context of what those scriptures I told you to pay attention to these scriptures in the context. This is the basis of what he's telling us in these scriptures right there. There is no justification for idolatry, meaning seeking self, worshiping self, worshiping the stars, worshiping anything around you. And I don't know who's watching today, but there's somebody that's doing these things and you're feeling the Lord, you're feeling him pulling your heart and he's trying to lead you and show you. Pay attention and get in the word. Get into Romans. Get into Romans, get into 1 Corinthians and he will show you. If you want to know who Jesus is, get into the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It'll show you who he is. Okay? But those scriptures, there is no justification for idolatry and misleading others away from the truth. 
If you are not speaking the truth or you feel like somebody is not speaking the truth, pull yourself away. You cannot involve yourself in there because then you're going to become weak listening to the lies and then you're going to believe the lies as the truth. And that's how it works. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jesus said, for my people know me and I them. If you're in the word and you know the truth, you know Jesus. He knows you. He knows every part of you. And he says, they hear my voice. They hear my voice, meaning you will not be misled because you know him. You hear him. You know the word. You can't be misled when you're renewing yourself and getting the context inside of you. We have to renew so we know, hear, and recognize his voice not being misled. We have to know scripture and its whole context ourselves. It is our sword, says the Lord. The enemy knows scripture, yet we, the Lord's people, do not. And I put a question in there, and this is just for you guys so that you can ask yourselves. Can you say five scriptures right now, speaking it out loud, against something or someone that is attacking you? That's an important question because... I truly believe there's so many of us, we get caught up in work and things we're doing. And, and don't get down on yourself that you haven't been in the word. But, but do you know five scriptures that you can honestly say, this thing is coming at me. I know that the word says this and start speaking against it. For no stone shall stumble and, and touch my foot. Do you know that word? Do you know that the angels go before you and they go behind you? For he says nothing and no one can come against you for I am your redeemer. Do you know that you have to know scripture so that when these things come, you're speaking the word of God. You're picking up the sword and you're using it. You have to use your sword and he will take care of it. That is how you get to that relaxation in me. Have joy, worship me. All you have to do is speak my word. For the angels hearken unto the voice of the Lord. What is the voice of the Lord? It is us speaking the word. They Follow what we say when we speak the word of God. He sends, he sends the angels out to protect us and to do things for us. But they can't do it if you're not telling them what to do. You have to speak the word of God and use your sword so that they can do it. All right, so uh, where was I at? Let me get back here. <laughs> they hear my voice. We have to renew so we know, hear, and recognize his voice not being misled. We have to know the scripture and its whole context ourselves. It is our sword, says the Lord. The enemy knows scripture, yet we, the Lord, people don't. So, so I'm just urging people today, find a couple scriptures in the word, whatever's coming at you, so that you can speak it against it. And, and I'm only telling you this. I want you to see how they work and how it moves and how the Lord will take care of everything. And you don't have to do anything. So, and then it says, you have to pick up your sword and use it. He tells us that our tongue is sharper than a two-edged sword. Your sword is the spoken word of God out your mouth, giving life to it. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. That is also scripture. So your tongue is sharper than a two-edged sword, mm -hmm. right? And it ha holds the power of life and death. What are you speaking? Are you speaking the word of God, pulling out your sword? I mean, it's sharper than two-edged sword. Yes, it is. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it's what you're speaking and what you're claiming and what you're allowing into your ears. You have to speak against it. So God says, the invisible, um, the invisible he has made visible and the very things you see all around you and foolishly serve. He says this in the word that all these things around you are evidence, observable evidence of his divine power. And who he is. Yet you foolishly serve the evidence instead of the one who created it. How powerful is that? You know, and he, when he's revealing that to me yesterday, I was like, he is so amazing. Everything is beautiful. And I can see how people can get caught up in thinking, oh, well, the stars line up and they lead to this or lead to that. But he says, do not foolishly look to the things that I have created for your enjoyment and serve them. For they will not lead you no way, saith the Lord. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and you look to me. Amen? Those are the words of God. You know, we cannot get caught up in these things, you guys. And, and even though they're amazing and they're beautiful, um, it kind of leads me to a conversation me and Anna and Aisha were having about, um, you know, the North Star, how they, the Lord told them to follow the North Star. Yeah, he told them to follow the North Star to lead him to Jesus. He didn't say follow the North Star because it will lead you to the ways and it will show you things and it will this. That was a divine, divine incident where the Lord was leading somebody to the Messiah to protect him and to get things where they need to go. He do not look unto anything but God. 
He gives you everything. He is the one who created all these things. He said, you may look onto this amazing beauty and wonder that I've created for you to enjoy with your eyes, for you to enjoy with your touch and your smell. But don't foolishly look to them as if they can tell you anything. For no one knows when he will come. No one knows. We can't fully understand God because we are in the flesh. He says to look to me and I will lead you. Amen. Amen. God is good. So he says, God says the invisible he has made visible in the very things you see all around you and foolishly serve. And that is in the word, guys. He is the creator and Jesus is the savior. And I put this last bit in there. This is something I kept hearing. He just kept telling me and telling me. So I knew it had to go in the blog. <laughs> he says, you know, I am the creator and Jesus is the savior. So start using the word, your sword, because it defeats all form darts that come your way. Every form dart that comes your way. So we can go into what is a form dart. Form darts are thoughts. He says, take up no thought. Take up no thought into your mind, which is enmity against God. The thoughts come in. You need to bind those thoughts. You need to get rid of them. They are formed. They're, that means they're not actual. That's just a form of it. When you take it up, you take it in, you start meditating on that. It then manifests into your heart. Then you start speaking it out your mouth. And then now it is a dart. It is not a form anymore. You have caused it to manifest within you. Cause it to manifest and stay in your thoughts. And now you've spoken it out of your mouth. And instead of speaking with the sword and the word of God, you're now speaking these darts into your own life. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I know I'm going today, ain't I? <laughs> I'm in teaching, preaching mode, right? <laughs> amen, amen. God is good. So, so he says, do not foolishly serve the things around you, for I created them all for your enjoyment. But look to the creator and not the created things. Um, so start using the word, your sword, because it defeats all form darts that come your way. And then on the end, you know, I do my little thing, praise and thank Jesus every day. Because he is an amazing God, you guys, and, and, and he will reveal things to you. He said revelation knowledge comes by seeking him and staying in the word and trusting in him, and he will start revealing things to you. I was talking to somebody yesterday, you know, and they're like, man, I don't know how you know the word or how you hear it's the same spirit that is in me, is in you, is in you. It's in every single one of us. It's inviting him into your heart. It's spending time with him. It's, it's seeking him and trusting in him no matter what comes your way and putting into action what he tells us to do. Putting into action, speaking the word, pulling out your sword, keeping your own mouth shut from the thoughts that you're not supposed to take up anyways because none of us are perfect and we do sometimes, you know, sit there and go, oh no, you know what I mean? The thoughts come in and then I think, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to own that thought. That is not my thought and I will not let it manifest into a dart. I know that I know you go before me and you are behind me for you will take care of all of my adversaries. That's what his word says, right? So and I'm only saying that because I, I did have an attack this week and, and I'm just, you know, I'm just going to sit and, and enjoy and trust the Lord and worship him because while we take care of his work, his promise in his word is that he will take care of ours, right? Amen. So anything that comes at you, any form dart, you know, <clears throat> trust in him, get in the word. I, I just urge you to get in the word and speak the word of God because it will change everything. He said, all things will turn to your favor. All things I will bless you with. I will give you the desires of your heart. You only need to trust in him. And it's the blog I put on before that is it's easy. It's Jesus. If you, even if you don't know what to pray, there's a new song out. I don't remember the name of the group, but um, they say, when you don't know what to pray, just say Jesus. Everything must fall and fall under his feet. Everything is under your feet. All you got to do is say, Jesus, Jesus. And I've done it. I've been there. Or I've been so hurt or so torn down feeling and whatever. And I'm like, Lord, I just don't know anymore. You know, I, I don't know. And I'd go, all I can say is Jesus, just Jesus, you know, and my, my pity little cry mode or whatever it was going on at the time. Um, so I wanted to share that blog with you guys because I want you guys to understand what I put on this blog is what the Lord's putting in my heart. And it's probably something that's going on in your life, something that the enemy's bringing against you and the Lord's leading me to write so that you know what to do. You know what to say. I put the scriptures in there for that situation or whatever's going on at that time. And you can take it off the block and speak it. You know, if somebody's coming at you, I've given you three or four scriptures right there. All you have to do is speak those scriptures out against them. You know, I know who goes before me, who's behind me, angels, armies. I mean, there's so much going on that, that you have to know the word. And the world is so, so rough now. 
you know, he, he says he will come again and he will come. I know without a doubt he will come. And this world is so bad, it's almost as if Sodom and Gomorrah back then, and he destroyed the whole city and surrounding cities. It's, it's at a point where we have to be ready within ourselves. We have to seek him. We have to trust him. We have to be ready. He says, be ready, for no one knows the day or time that I will come. I don't care who seeks what. I don't care what stars they look to. I don't care what, what observable things that they see that the Lord has put down here, you will not know when he's coming. So you have to be ready within yourself. You have to know that Jesus loves you. You have to know that you are forgiven and free, that you are in the flesh and you will never be perfect and that yesterday's mistakes are not today. Quit picking up tomorrow or quit picking up yesterday and trying to carry it into tomorrow. It's something else he told me. It's a, a blog I'll be writing. So stop picking up yesterday, carrying it to tomorrow. I love you as you are today. So so go to the blog and follow along with that. Um, it, it touches in 1 Corinthians. It touches in Romans. Um, Adonijah had a scripture that, um, that he gave me when he came in. And I think it's important um, to share that with you guys too and, and um, let him share a little bit of, of what happened with him today and, and mm -hmm. what the Lord kept saying to him on his way here and how he how he pulled to that scripture. So um, I really hope you guys read that blog and, and start picking up your sword and using it because that is your defense. He says that our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is spiritual against the pulling down of mighty strongholds and evil that comes against us. That's another scripture. You know, we have to know these things, you guys. If you don't know it, you're weak. You're easily misled. You have to know the word so that you can pick up your sword and use it. So do you have your scripture there? Or? Yes, yes. Go ahead. It's uh, Hebrews 13 and 2. I got it right here too as well, if you want me to read it out loud. Or, yeah. Do you got it? But it's, it's uh, I just want to give a few different versions of it so, you know, you might get a different understanding of it, what it's Amen. really saying. The New International Version says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. So, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Amen. Uh, the New Living Translation says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for some have done this, have entertained angels without realizing it. Okay, and the King James Version simply says, Do not forget to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So that means some people that we can meet can be angels. Amen. And these people, the Bible says, I read a scripture in the Bible where it says that we are epistles read of men. There are some people who might not ever read the Bible, but if Jesus is really shining and really being exemplified through us, they will see that Jesus. Amen. You know, and it's not about it's the light that's in you. Right. And it's not about uh, it's, it's, it's not about always just speaking. Just like I have met some people. There was a guy I used to do business with. And uh, every time you would run into him, it was Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Amen. Lord. And that's not how God wants us to be because the same guy told me when a business deal went bad, he would blow my head off. So wait, 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 I'm lost here. I'm sorry, guys. I I don't know if you're lost. Here. To go over that again, because you lost me for a minute there. Okay, you have people who religious who want who want to. They want it's like you saying pride, self lifting. There's some people who can even lift themselves by spewing out Jesus all the time to make themselves mean seem seem to be more holy than they are. But the Bible says we are epistles read of men. And if I'm reading a book, that don't mean that book is always talking. I'm just reading a book. I'm observing the book. People can observe our lives. It's like the enemy lives. knows scripture. You're not yeah. knowing content yeah. yourself. People can Amen. observe our lives, and that's what can make them want Christ. But, it's, but, but the scripture was saying that we can entertain angels. So that means any day now. You can run across an angel. Oh, amen. And how you treated that, how you treated them, God is looking at that. Amen. How we treat people, how we treat our fellow men. Even it's in not, your own hurt or your own anger, how yes. are you acting? It's are not you just about showing, our family. It's are you not, showing the love of yeah. Christ? It's not just about our family. It's not just about our friends. 
We're all family. Yes. That's my brother right there, y'all. Yes. <laughs> I've been saying y'all all week. Where is yeah. that coming from? I don't but, know. But <laughs> Jesus did Jesus did good to whoever. Whoever it was, if he met a bum, if he met, you know, somebody that might have been on drugs. Even those that attacked him. Even those you that know, attacked him. You know, and he was him. chastised yes. by everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Mm-hmm. And he still loved him. Yes, I love everybody, did. too. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. Um, Again, um, I really, I would like to say the salvation prayer. You know, if there's anybody out there that um, you don't know Jesus or you do and you have fallen back and you just feel like you're pulled away and you just want to renew, you just want to renew yourself to the Lord um, and say the salvation prayer with us, I'm going to read in Hebrews um, a couple scriptures real quick, you guys, because even though you may not understand it, which God says you'll never fully understand me, just trust in him and believe. Just ask him into your heart today. Just ask him to be your guide and and be your way. Um, So in Hebrews um, 10.10, he says, um, And by that will... We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So it's already done. So all of these things that are coming against you, this guilt you're feeling or these attacks, know that you are forgiven and free, that not one person is perfect out there. And Jesus paid that price once and for all. He made it for us. So there's 10.10. I'm going to drop down to 12, Hebrews 10, 12, if you're following along. But when the priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, one, sins is plural in there, you guys, Mm -hmm. he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he now waits, right? So then I'm going to drop down to 14 real quick. Because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever forever. How amazing is that? Those who are being made holy, being made holy. The sacrifice has been made. You are made holy through Christ. Your body never will be. You can't be in the flesh, but you are continually made holy through Christ who died once and for all, for all sins. And this is forever. This isn't just for today. This wasn't just for yesterday and then you felt it is for today. So grab a hold of Jesus and just trust in him and know that you are forgiven and free. He's just, God doesn't, he's not out to judge you and down you or, you know, he knows you'll fall here and there. The point is, is where does your heart stand? Do you, do you realize it and just say, you know what, Lord, I'm sorry. I just want to I just want to ask you for forgiveness, Lord, and just continue to work in me and continue to work in me in this area. So we're going to say the salvation prayer. Um, if you want to follow along, Anna and I will probably say it after I do. Um, you can say it with him. I urge you to, even if you know the Lord and you just want to say it or renew and just bring yourself back to where you need to be. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll just bow our heads and just, yes. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We just come before you, Lord. We just come before you, Lord. We ask you for forgiveness of our sin, Father. We ask you for forgiveness of our sins. For we believe in your Son, Jesus. We believe in your Son, Jesus. We believe that he died and rose again on the third day. We believe that he died and rose again on the third day. We know and believe that he sits at your right hand, Lord. We know and believe that he sits at your right hand, Lord. Father God, we just ask that he come into our hearts today. Father God, we just ask that he come into our hearts today. We worship you and praise you. We worship you and praise you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 You know, usually I do a little bit longer one, but he just led me to do just a simple little ask him into your heart. That's all it takes. Just, just worship and praise him because that's all it really takes, you <laughs> guys. It, takes. it doesn't matter where you're at, where you're sitting. You know, if you're watching this on a rerun, you know, I'll bring that up. You know, um, I had somebody message me um, on Facebook yesterday, you know, and, and and it touched my heart, you know, because you do wonder sometimes, you know, because the enemy, like I said, he, he forms these darts and throws them at you. You, you know, you're not helping nobody. You know, mm. you're not this, you're not that, you know. Mm. You're not even what the Lord says, you know, wants you to do. And um, and I'm not going to go into names or anything, you know, but because um, I do believe she'll be on here one day or she'll she'll call in and share that testimony because she said she would. But, um, you know, she messaged me on Facebook and said, you know, I had picked up and watched your show like you had asked me to, you know, she told me about. She said, but but she lives in an, in another state and she says, you know, and I went back home and I, I just kept feeling it in my heart. I just kept feeling it in my heart, feeling it in my heart. She said, so, um, the Lord just kept putting it on me. So I went back and watched your show again. She said, and I said the salvation prayer 
and I'm seeking God and I'm getting closer to the Lord and I know that you know it's just amazing how God works you know and it's so it's so worth it if you don't understand it just to seek and trust him because every single one of us had that desire in us to worship and serve but don't worship the wrong things you know seek the Lord seek him ask him into your heart he will show you who he is you can see it in everything around you that everything points to him we are perfectly aligned Perfect away from the sun. I mean, it is divine. His divine nature is all around us. So just seek him and worship him. Um, Adonijah is going to be at the No Walls Jam for Jesus, you guys. I just pray that, that you come on out. It's to help people. It's to lift the name of Jesus. It's to help lift the artists. It's to help feed the destitute and the poor here in America and in Mexico to help these children. Um, I urge you to donate to help to help them, to help us with the concert. It's uh, jamforjesus.org, jamforjesus.org. You can go on there. You can use PayPal. You can use credit, debt, whatever you want, whatever the Lord puts in your heart, um, even if it's $2, you know, whatever the Lord, because whatever seeds you plant, the Lord is going to lift and bless you 10 times full, you know, and that's in the word also. So um, I, I went yesterday, and, and believe it or not, even though I throw these concerts and even though it's through my, my show, I still donate myself you know and I still give because I know what it takes to do these things and, and it's 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 not always easy I should say and, and the attacks come but when you trust in the Lord all things he will add unto you and, and I just believe he's just going to keep continue lifting it um I ask that you keep Flint Talk Radio in your prayers you guys um for I know the Lord's going to bless them, and uh, just keep them in your prayers. Also, the Hour of Compassion, Pamela Lockhart, um, Courtney Williams, my father, uh, my father, amen, <laughs> my grandfather, Roy, uh, Roy Castro, Evangelist Roy Castro, he is in Texas right now, uh, sharing the word, on his way to El Paso this week, lined up to share some word there to help these children while he's down there, um, and then he's going to take a train back here, and make it back in time for the concert. You know, that's a funny thing. He says, you know, you know, the Lord, ah, whatever the Lord wants. I said, yeah, well, the Lord loves me too. And I say, you're going to be here for this concert. He's like, I don't know. I don't know. So he called me at the beginning of the week and he says, uh, yeah, you're going to start looking for a, a train or something. I think I want to take a train back, you know, and maybe mm -hmm. around the, the second week. I said, oh, you're going to make it for the concert, <laughs> right? So, so Courtney Williams, he will be hosting the concert with me. Amen. Um, if you guys need prayer or you need, you just want to share, you can call me. My number is 810-449-2247. Adonijah Richmond, he's more than happy and willing to do events at your church or wherever. You can also call him. What is your phone number? 313-603-0728. One more time. 313-603-0728. Amen. Amen. Also, Flint Talk Radio, you can call in. Um, it's 810-208-1854. Again, 810-20... You got a call? Your mother? <laughs> oh, amen. Amen. So we have a call. It's my mother. <laughs> Hello. Can Hello. You... Amen. How are you, mother? <laughs> I am blessed and healed and walking in divine health. Amen. I am amen. calling to see who's going to be at Jam for Jesus? What's going on with it and exactly where it's located? It is located at the A to Z Event Center. This is my mother, you guys, so she's she must be realizing I didn't put out where it's going to be held at and stuff. Mm -hmm. Praise God for your parents, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's at the A to Z Event Center on Richfield Road. It's December 14th at 5 o'clock. There is no cost to get in. Grab your kids. Iron Man is going to be there, you guys. Get your pictures taken with uh, Iron Man. Dan Sifa is doing some great, great things for the Lord and, and the children. Um, Adonijah Richmond's going to be there. My mother is going to be there. Right, mother? I will be there. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Mom. Praise the Lord. I'm <laughs> believing John is going to be there too, the producer. Come on out and dance like David danced with me for a minute, right? Yes, John. <laughs> I'm calling. You're going to be dancing at a gospel thing? Huh? You're going to be dancing at a gospel oh, thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know that. We're going to dance like David danced. I guess you guys are not Baptists, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I love well, that. I heard that Courtney Williams is going to be there. Uh, Courtney Williams is going to host the event with me this time. Amen. Praise Thank the Lord. God. Praise the Lord. So, uh, so it's going to be great. I love, I love hanging with Courtney. We, we seem to have that click, and, and the Lord just kind of moves. So I'm excited about that. He's full of energy. He's full of the Lord. He's full of the Word. I'm excited. Um, I know. Um, who else is going to be there? Uh, Joe Brown will be there. There's also um, Streets Crybaby is going to be there. Um, Marcus Walker. 
I don't know for sure yet. He's ha has some things going on. I'm trying to get a skit together now with the kids and maybe do a little uh, a little skit for you guys, which I, I think will be fun. I'm going to give too many details out on that because that's a surprise. Chatty might, Chatty might be singing for y'all. <laughs> I think I might do some backup for Adonijah maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Amen. So, yeah, it's at the A to Z Event Center, you guys. That's on Richfield Road. Um, we also, um, who were the, I have a, a sheet here, you guys. Let me pull it out real quick. There'll be, there'll be raffles. Amen. Oh, yes, there's raffles. There's gifts. There's giveaways. Thank you, Mother. You are so amazing. I'm so blessed to have you. <laughs> she is so amazing. Well, I'm blessed to have you. Oh, amen. Amen. So it's <laughs> A to Z Event Center, you guys, 4437 Richfield Road. That's in Flint, Michigan. It's 48506. There's music, food, raffles, dance, Iron Man, Joe Brown, Sean Akins is going to be there. That's Streets Cry Baby, Adonijah Richmond, Life Giver. I'm praying and believing Mike Diego will be there. He's so wonderful. He, his music is so great. He, he gets the crowd lifted up, and he's just so blessed and so blessed. And, and I just truly believe he's going to be there. He hasn't given me a confirmation yet. Um, this is all through the International Fivefold Ministry, you guys, to help the destitute and the hungry. It is all nonprofit. Every bit of it goes to help local churches, help the artists, and, and help these children and people that are without or, or these kids that are eating out of dumpsters and don't have anything. So do know that anything that you do donate or that you that co even coming out and helping lift the name of Jesus, all of it is to help these people because that's that's what it's about. To show Show these people that we do care and that, that there is Jesus in, in love. So you can make a donation at www.jamforjesus.org, www.jamforjesus.org. Um, I'll hold up this flyer here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Can they see that, John? Try to zoom in on it real quick. I'm so glad you called, Mother. I was so just off into the Word. I forgot to go over all this for these people. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just take up your sword and walk in favor today. Amen. I love you, and I will see you in a few. All right. I love you, Bye -bye. too. Thank you. That was my mother, you guys, Ann Sneller. She is... um. She is everything. She, she is a wonderful woman. She, she helps me in so many ways, and I'm so thankful to the Lord for her. So we got it? Okay. Amen. 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 So there's that, you guys. You can also, you can look me up on Facebook. You can look up Faith and Hope with Charity on Facebook. You can look up No Walls Jam for Jesus concerts on Facebook. The website, again, is www.jamforjesus.org. You can go there. You can look at the artists. You can get updates on events. You can look at the sponsors who are all on there. We have AAA McNamara Properties. We have A to Z Event Center. They um, they gave us a great discount to be able to do the concerts there that's uh Don Sampson and um, I believe his name is Mike Mike Holly or I, I I feel bad for not knowing that right out but but you know they're all helping and doing what they can and I just praise the Lord for them I do know that he's going to be start doing other gospel concerts there as well praise praise the Lord for that so so the owner uh, Mike is it Mike or Mark I'm hoping it's Mike but. He's going to be doing concerts there as well. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to give you guys updates on that also so that you can go to those. Um, because I know that his sister, he was saying, does a lot of uh, charitable work and things. And, uh, and and they're working together to get stuff done. So again, No Walls concert, December 14th. You do not want to miss it. Um, I, I really hope you guys come out. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have so much going on there. Um, Go to the blog, follow along, keepingfaithinyourears.com, www.keepingfaithinyourears.com. Keep Evangelist Roy Castro lifted up in your prayers as he's traveling down there, um, sharing the word of God, helping these people, you know, eat and do things like that. So uh, say a prayer for him for his travels back. I believe he'll be coming back the 10th. Um, I have to look the train information up again, but it'll be the 10th or 11th so that he can be here for the concert and share with you guys, you know, because he is an evangelist and, and what an amazing thing that he gives himself to the Lord to, to help people that are sick and, and, and need that. You know what I'm saying? Also, Pamela Lockhart, her uh, Dinner for the Homeless, December 27th. Um, that's on the Hour of Compassion, which comes on an hour after I go off, and that's at 2 o'clock today. Um, I believe Courtney Williams will be on there today with, I don't remember, I talked to him yesterday, and his phone kept cutting out and stuff. So, again, sent, call yeah, me, he, 8 one, huh? He just sent me a flyer to be used during that show, so I'm assuming he's here, so going to be here. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, I believe uh, 2 o'clock today, you guys, you don't, you don't want to miss that, uh, Courtney Williams. 
on the Hour of Compassion. Um, I believe there's a, a ministry that, that they're going to share today, and, and I'm not sure. It's a little bit of a different show today for them, so um, do tune in and watch it. I know I'll be watching it on my cell phone um, because we have meetings afterwards, so um, praise the Lord for that. Adonijah Richmond, keep him lifted up in your prayer. Uh, amazing worshiper and, and sharing the Word of God through song, and, and we're just so thankful for him, and, and I'm just thankful because, you know, it's just a joy to even be around him because he's funny on top of it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's silly. All right, so um, again, call me, 810-449-2247. If you have anything that you want to share, um, testimony, or even if you just want prayer, I'll pray with you. I'll do whatever I can to help you in any way that I can. You can look me up on Facebook. It's Charity McNamara. You can look up Faith and Hope with Charity on Facebook. You can look it up on YouTube. You can also look up uh, the No Walls Jam for Jesus. Um, I do have a we another website that I'm building right now for um, for the ministry, and, and I'll get that information out to you guys later. Um, again, you know, it doesn't matter what you've done yesterday. It doesn't matter even if you fell today. What matters is this very moment and that Jesus loves you and all you have to do is just ask him into your heart and know that you are forgiven and free and all you have to do as he says is look on to me amen so Adonijah maybe he'll sing a song and, and kind of close us out here today I thank you guys for for joining in with me on, on lifting mm -hmm. Jesus and and I pray you're at the concert keep uh, Flint Talk Radio in your prayers and uh, tune in every week it's live Friday at noon here on Flint Talk Radio I just want you to know, viewers, that Jesus loves you. Amen. No matter what you have done, no matter how bad you have been, you Amen. can be forgiven. If you feel brokenhearted, you feel, you feel hurt, you feel abused, you feel neglected, Jesus loves you. And that's the thing that I really love about him, that he loves us in spite of. In spite Ain't of. Ain't that amazing? Amen. He's that, awesome. That he loves us. So therefore, we should move forward. For now, there is no, for there now is no more condemnation, condemnation. in him. Scripture, guys, we got to be able yes. to speak these things. That's our sword. For there is now no more condemnation through Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. There's this little hymn that just says, You make all things new. And you make all things new. I will follow. Forward, you make all things new, and you make all things new. I will follow you forward, forward. Let's move Lord. forward. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Move forward Amen. in the Lord. Move Let forward. it go. You are forgiven and free. Draw yes. your eyes unto me. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's just something you put in my heart to say. So I'm going to say it again. You are forgiven and forgiven free. And free. Let it go. And move, and move forward. forward. Draw your <laughs> eyes Amen. unto me. Not me, the Lord. <laughs> draw your eyes unto thee. How about that one? <laughs> forgiven and free. So draw your eyes unto thee. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless, and we'll see you guys next week live at noon. FlintTalkRadio.com.